Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be going over more Omega. In the last lesson, we got our CSS finally working, and we had JavaScript in here. Um, so now let's go through some of Omega's appearance menu screens. In your uh, Drupal uh, toolbar up here, you're going to click Appearance. And it's going to take you to your themes page. Uh, we're going to click settings on our sub theme. So ours is level up theme. I'm going to click settings. All right. And now you'll see here that this are the settings for your Omega. And you can see at right off the start here, we have grid system, which grid we want default or fluid. We're going to leave this at the 960. So it's not totally fluid, although you can play around with what the fluid does. Um, and we'll see enable responsive grid. If we turn this off, uh, the site won't be re responsive at all. In fact, let's go to our site and see what sort of responsiveness is built in to Omega itself. So if I, I just resize this page here, uh, well, if I get to, okay. If I resize this page here, you're gonna see some of our, our zones and everything adjusting and moving around. And these are the default uh, responsive media queries. Uh, this is the default for Omega where all these regions and zones are and where they're going to be once you adjust the page. If we were to turn this off, save it, none of that would happen. You'd just be left with your standard 960 display. Okay, and uh, you're gonna wanna probably leave this allow customizing viewport meta properties on Android devices checked. Uh, now we don't have to deal with it. Initial scale is 1.0. Yeah, I don't get why you would want it set to something else. You want it to be set to 1.0 pretty much. Um, I don't really need this to be scalable by the user. Uh, and so for our default laying op layout options, uh, we have several different layouts set up, and this is for our responsive site. We're gonna go over all these in a bit more detail in a lesson that's specifically dedicated to the media queries with Omega. So we'll come back to these, like I said, let's see what else is in here. Now we have our zones and region configuration. Again, I'm gonna talk about these in a specific zones and region configuration uh, tutorial because there's enough stuff here that you're gonna want to have a dedicated video for those. Our debugging options, uh, if we go back to our page here, you can see that we have these two check marks here. It's our blocks and our grid. Uh, right now they're on and they're on by default. One thing that I like to do when working in um, in this Omega when you're developing is turn off the show grid by default and just enable them so that they're allowed to be there. So if you enable the grid and enable the debugging placeholder, if we save our configuration, now when we visit our site, it's not gonna be crowded with all the, the grid and the, the blocks here. What we're gonna see is more what the site's going to look like and then you can turn them on optionally if you'd like. So this is what I would recommend doing. However, uh, it's your own workflow. So whatever works for you works. Um, okay, so that wasn't debugging. Also, if you wanted to have the site while it's uh, live, if you wanted uh, to check the uh, debugging the grid or the blocks for some reason, you didn't want your anonymous users or authentic authenticated users to see it, you can just uncheck these two and administrators will be the only ones that can see uh, those options. Again, it's something I would probably do uh, right off the bat just in case you, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't forget to turn that off, but in the case that it happens, I would turn that off right when you start. And here you have some optional libraries, Formalize, uh, which if you're not familiarized, check out formalize.me, uh, get familiar with it. Uh, media queries, we'll leave those checked. We'll leave Formalize checked. I'm gonna leave Equal Heights unchecked. Uh, toggle Styles. If you'll notice, when you, uh, when you have a Omega site, there is a ton of CSS that comes already with your site. And some of it may be good for you and some of it may not. Let's say uh, I typically don't like to use Omega's form styles or their menu styles or their, and, you know, I actually go through and turn a ton of these off because I'm gonna be writing my own. I don't need to be constantly overwriting their styles. Um, like Omega visuals, this sort of puts like a, a custom visual style for Omega pagers and menus. Some of that stuff I wish they would have left off of the base theme and just let you do it because it really doesn't, I don't think it looks very good if you leave those on and you're gonna have to you know redo it anyways. So you can come in here, turn as many of these off or on as you want, the CSS reset, uh, any of this stuff. I also have this disable module theme style sheets, but this is a, a custom module I have installed on the site. So you won't be seeing this. Uh, and let's toggle advanced elements. Okay, 
So here we can display, uh, dis disable the display of certain page elements, messages, tabs, breadcrumbs, page title, feed icons. And this is going to be turning it off for your whole site. So I mean, I would really probably use something like context to turn off the page title on the pages you don't want to have it turned on to. Um, but keep in mind, you're turning this stuff off, it's turning it off for the whole site. Now at the very bottom of all of these, you'll see this toggle display. This is logo, logo site name, site slogan, users and pictures, uh, posts, user pictures and comments. I'm going to check both user verification status and comments. I'm not, I'm not even going to have users on the site, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, shortcut icon, yeah, that's your favicon. Um, and by default, there's a main menu and a secondary menu. Now the main menu is good to have on because it wraps it in a nav tag, whereas uh, for HTML5, right, you're going to probably want that wrapped in a nav tag. And if you're doing a menu block, you won't be getting that sort of same wrapping. It's just going to be a UL. So for your main menu, I might say leave this on. Secondary menu, if you need it, uh, turn it on. If not, um, you can just make a menu block. It's no big deal. Um, and these last two things, logo image settings and shortcut icon settings. All right, let's see our site. We have our logo image is right here by default. It's the Drupal drop with the Omega logo. And then for our favicon, it's the Drupal drop. If you want to use your own, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't, you can enter a path to a custom logo. In fact, uh, I'll just grab this Level Up Tuts logo. And I don't have a favicon on hand, so I'm just going to leave it as the Drupal one for now. But I'm going to click Save. Okay, now let's refresh our page. And you'll see here's this giant image. Uh, it's way too big. I thought it was actually small, but um, you can see our things are turned off by default. Some of the stylings went away because I turned off some of those default Omega stylings. But this is how you get in to edit the basic Omega stylings. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about the regions and zones and how you can move everything around and really control your content. As always, if you have any questions, please, you know, leave a comment in the video, hit us up on Twitter. You know, I, we, we do get a lot of comments and I do my best to try to get to them and I can't always get to them all. Uh, like I said, this is really just a spare time project for me. So uh, I, I'm, I'm getting to it as fast as I can, but please keep on leaving comments. Maybe somebody else will see an answer if I don't get to it first. Okay, as always, this is Scott Talinsky and thanks for watching.